if I asked you what DNS was, you'd probably say, oh, DNS is the domain name service. It's, it's, it allows us to remember host names like google.com instead of having to remember IP addresses like 173.194.219.26 or this IPv6 address. Except that's the stupidest answer in the fucking world. In no future would we be forced to remember IP addresses. All of the major transport protocols had name resolution before DNS. When you're on your stupid LAN at home and you, do, and you type whack whack in your workstation name and you get into your mom's fucking file share on her computer. There's no DNS there. It's NetBIOS name resolution. You didn't have to remember her fucking IP address. In fact, it's probably dynamic. You don't even know what her fucking IP address is, do you? We're gonna get into the myths and bullshit associated with people that think they know what DNS is about. DNS is about fucking power. DNS is about stateless and hierarchical majesty going on across the internet without having a central point of failure. If you've ever heard someone that has a domain name say they made a change and they have to push it out, or they have to wait for it to propagate, they're full of shit. What they mean is that they suck at DNS and they don't understand it's pulled and they've neglected to lower their TTL so that you have to wait a really long time before your ISP servers fucking stop caching their bullshit, wrong ass, outdated responses that they've neglected to update. It's important that you understand the full nature of DNS in order to understand why it's important and why it's decentralized and why it matters. A records and quad A records are how host names get resolved to IP addresses, but there's more than that. MX records are how your mail server, hotmail.com, finds where to send mail when you type at gmail.com. That's an, that's an MX record lookup. SRV records are how your client finds the server if you're using Active Directory, Skype for Business, Jabber, or time servers, licensing servers. SRV records. Text records are used when you want to tell the world to go fuck yourself. Arbitrary conventions like SP, which is not like sunblock, it's how you keep spam from being emanated from your domain. Basically, you use the text record to say, hey, my mail servers are coming on these IP addresses, and if you see mail from anywhere else, it's wrong. So anyway, you probably have a decent understanding of that because it's not that fucking hard. This is a name, and then it, it has this data associated with it. Whether it's this type, this type, this type, or this type, you got questions, we got answers. It's like Radio Shack. You say, hey, what's this? And it says, hey, it's that. But it's not that simple. For starters, it's important to know that if you own DNS, you own people's fucking identity. Because think about it. Every account you've ever created on the internet, it's either rooted in your phone number, or it's rooted in an email address. And there's a good chance it's rooted in your email address. Or even if it's rooted in a phone number, you can use the email address to get into it. So either way, DNS is at the heart of access control. Because all email addresses, all recovery email, anything like that relies on DNS. Even systems where they're gonna SMS you, they rely on DNS to get to the provider that sends you the SMS. So. Again, it, it's, it's big from a security standpoint. Certificates and chains of certificate trust and the trust of your own certificate authority are all based on host names. You can sit there and be feeding your credit card information into ebay.com and that address bar being green as a motherfucking pesto avocado mix with certificates and padlock icons all over the fucking place. But if they let the domain expire, or someone hijack their domain and eBay.com isn't eBay.com anymore, it doesn't give him it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter if you trust eBay.com because that's not who they are anymore. If you control DNS, you control everything. Not just because you can redirect people to Goatsy when they're trying to get to their company intranet. Host names are the root of email, and email is the root of identity and access control. On the internet, anyway. You could have anything. You could have the most expensive, most secure email setup in the world. With multiple servers, with full tolerance, high availability, geo-redundancy, and you could have Cloudflare. You could have all kinds of crazy shit. But if your hostname no longer belongs to you, that doesn't matter because it's pointing over here now. Or if you fucked up and it's not yours anymore, none of that infrastructure matters. Guess what? CartalkBiz.turds is going over here now, and I own it. I own a domain name. I won't tell you what it is, but it's a bunch of X's dot XXX. 
and I get a report every day from a very large retail company that details everything that they have on layaway in all of their stores and gives me a total of their merchandise that's on layaway. I don't know why, but at some point someone prepared an automated report and they put all X's in the email field and for years it didn't go anywhere because it didn't resolve and now that I own the domain, I get the email every day and there's very little way that they would ever know that anything was different that I'm now getting this report. One of the problems with, with having things rooted on DNS is when you put something in a box, when you put an email address in a box because you invite the person or you you want to register as that name, there's really no expiration date on how long that service will use that email address. And decades from now, 40, 50, 60 years from now, people are going to be sending you mail that's going to other people. And it's, it's very heartbreaking because we don't really think about it. The internet hasn't been around that long for us to think about stale identity information that we can't clean up, that we can't stop from going to the wrong people. Who decides what domains are available? Jesus. And only Jesus. All other religions have to go through a registrar. Well, the RFC sets out what a valid host name consists of, and Iana, I-A-N-A. Iana, which is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, they create the top-level domains and manage them. These days, it's a fucking cartel. If you have enough money, you can pay someone off and you'll have a dot turds or whatever dot farts domain name. Registrars are set up and they basically contribute to the top-level domain name servers like the .com and the .net servers. They are updated by the individual registrars, then those servers, they're uh, delegated to by the root name servers, everyone knows the root name servers, there's tons of them, and they're all available for any cast and multicast and all that bullshit, and it basically means that you have a decent authoritative way of finding anyone. The good thing about DNS is that if the server you're asking can't figure something out, you can just fucking be like, fuck you, I'll figure it out myself. Because the only piece of information you need to resolve DNS, if you don't have a server that you trust, is a list of the root name servers that you trust. And as long as you trust that list, you can ask the root name servers, and they won't answer you. They'll be like, fuck you, you're not getting any information from us other than where .com is and only .com. Fuck all the other TLDs. We don't even acknowledge they exist. You gotta go out and talk to one of those IPv6 bullshit heads if you want to know where .shoes resolves to. Somewhere in fucking the European Union, I would expect. Because the Europeans love shoes. So that's always nice. And you don't want to wind up being someone else's recursive resolver. Just like that song that I wrote called Don't Be Someone Else's Recursive Resolver. Don't be someone else's recursive resolver. Don't be recursively resolving for my friends. My friend asked you where is google.com. You responded without even asking who you are. It's like if you're a Comcast customer, but you're gonna ask Cablevision's DNS servers because you like them better or they're faster. This was unheard of until Google set up their own free DNS that basically anyone can use. So it's actually very rare that you need to do recursive resolving on your own behalf. Google will do it for you. And they do it pretty well. All right, kids, sing along. 8.8.8.8. 8.8.4.4. GSLB is just a bullshit buzzword way of saying DNS records that change based on policy. Based on where you are, who you are, the load of the servers, time of day, the price of gas, the last seven digits of your social security number, whether Puxatani Phil sees his shadow or not, determines what response you get. And systems like Akamai or AWS that have lots of nodes all over the place, you might get a different IP every time you ask. You might get a different IP if you're in a different country or a different part of the world or a different and anything. My favorite's reverse DNS because it sounds so fucking dirty. So everyone understands how forward DNS works and how the chain of authority works. If you're selling creamy.turds.biz to someone, that means that you own turds.biz 
and that you went through a registrar that's working with the .biz name servers and they're delegated to by the root name servers. It's fucking simple. Everyone understands how that works, you just delegate down the chain. But people are like, how the fuck does reverse DNS work? So reverse DNS is when you take an IP address and you turn it into a host name. And it's really useful because you get an authoritative view of who that IP is supposed to be for. And it's used a lot in mail to make sure that the person that's sending from a domain is really sending from that domain. Because anyone can open a connection to a mail server and be like, hey, I am do not reply at paypal.com. But it's another thing if you're actually connecting from an IP address that resolves to something on paypal.com. So how does this work? Like, where where is there this table where these IPs turn into, oh shit, it's so fucking bright. How does this work? The people that own the IP blocks maintain the delegation of the name servers where those names resolve to. I know that's a lot of words and you don't understand any of them, but let me try to make it simple. This is a pun, and it is a pun. It refers to DNS because you literally reverse the fucking name. If I own 1.2.3.0, I'm given authority over the domain 3.2.1.in-adur.arpa. As if I like owned, like I bought that domain, I can then sub-delegate pieces of that. But that is actually how I, the owner of IP space, whether I be an ISP or like I just bought a chunk from Amazon, it's basically how I get to say, this is the host name that shows up when you send a mail for my IP or you go to IRC. People are like, hey Neil, on IRC how come your host name's just masked out, it's just a bunch of X's? And I'm like, well, it's not masked out, that's actually my host name. So you're like, Neil, you're pointing out a bunch of security flaws in DNS. It seems like if someone can control DNS, they can control a lot of shit. Well, yeah, it's true, and it's called DNS uh, poisoning. Um, it, it's, it's not really easy to do on a global scale because you can't really intercept other people's DNS easily. But if you're on a local scale, like you're running a Wi-Fi, and people are connecting to it, you can easily intercept the DNS and, you know, if people are stealing your Wi-Fi, then redirect them to your own version of Google.com that, you know, instead points to Goatsy or something. I'm sure this is done 20,000 times every year at DEF CON in the lobby. But there's other security holes in DNS. Not really holes, but assumptions of good faith is what I like to call it. The problem with DNS is that by, by, by nature, you're asking a question and you're getting an answer that is larger than the question, which basically means if you ask a bunch of questions, the server has to give you a bunch of answers, and the asymmetry could lead you to abusing it because you could easily... I won something on eBay. It could lead to abuse because not only could you make the server pump out tons of replies that you really don't care about just to make it busy, you could make those replies go to someone else by spoofing your IP because DNS is UDP based and there's really nothing that precludes you from doing that. And it's called a DNS amplification attack. Hey, give me a whole bunch of data and then you write someone else's IP on it, like you stick them with the check and then the DNS server, which is usually on a really good connection, pumps all that bullshit that, that, that this person's unsuspecting. They don't even care about their computer's just discarding it. Actually, at best, their computer's discarding it, but if they don't have their beautiful Windows firewall on, their computer's probably sending back a whole bunch of ICMP traffic, basically saying that port is unreachable because you're a fucking bullshit, no good son of a bitch. What is going on here? There is something called DNSSEC, which is basically signing the records so that someone can't hijack. Well, they can hijack your records, but if you set your people up to believe that your records are always signed and they're always signed by your known, you know, authority, well then, then I guess you have something going on. But the problem is, is that in order for DNSSEC to be useful, you have to actually check to make sure that your records are signed and they're signed by the right person. It doesn't do any good if you don't have control over the clients that are doing this. You can sit there and sign your records all day long, but if you can't control people's computers and turn it on so that they reject the records if they're not signed, then you really have no say in it whatsoever. We'll save glue records for another time. I, I don't think they're I don't think you'll find them as fascinating as I find them. Let's talk to my girlfriend. I had something to drink besides
besides melted ice. I'm, we're coming to you. Do you see me? Yes, I tried to stop you from turning into the wrong parking lot, but you didn't listen to me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry.